uh, at our London conference and said, Russia's going to collapse and you got about 30 days. And I didn't realize, but the London Financial Times, somebody was there at in that conference and they put it on the front page. So when Russia collapsed, that created long-term capital management and all that sort of stuff. So um, that's when the CIA called us and said, hey, you know, okay, fine, we have to have this model. And, and I told them, look, we'll run it, any study you want, no problem. But then they said, no, we have to own it. And I said, well, you know, forget it. I'm not going to do it. So that existed. Um, but at the same time, it was uh, largely the banks that uh, were illegally trading in our account, exactly the same as MF Global. And they were um, using segregated accounts to play the stock market. Pretty much. I mean, it, what they do is they play it one against the other. The rules in the states do not require a bank to tell you they're taking your money out. And they sell it overnight. And they sell it in London. In London, they have to have a signature of a client. So what happens, it's the U.S. Uh, branch has a, an account with the London branch. And so to meet the law over there, they said, well, did the client agree? They said, yes, the U.S. branch agreed. So you have no idea going on. And what they were actually doing, I understood the system, so I was buying Fannie Mae, and which are not, you can't post in repo. So I knew what they could and couldn't, so they, I, they started selling them, but not putting the entries in our accounts. And so uh, Damon- had Hold on, explain that when there, we come back, because that's a technical, there. stay there because your Skype's breaking up a bit. Uh, the, the, that's technical, so I want people to understand exactly what you're getting at. Uh, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Your phone calls as well. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. Mark Armstrong is our guest. Uh, famous uh, economist, famous analyst. Uh, the, the documentary, a major film, shows him on the news, him in the newspapers, predicting things that happened. The feds then came and grabbed him and took him to jail. It's pretty amazing when you see this type of persecution going on. And I think from my research, he can correct me if I'm wrong, we're starting to get to that. He could see their market manipulation and basically start telling clients how to trade off of watching them manipulate. Now you have flash trading, high frequency trading, the plunge protection team, the president's open market committee. We've gone from a point where it was a conspiracy theory to say you could see manipulation of the gold market or the oil market or the interest rates. Now that's all admitted, but they kind of just hide it in plain view and nobody gets in trouble. Because the big guys are allowed to do this as they consolidate the economy in a crony system while developing a police state to suppress the population when the whole thing goes belly up, I guess they'll have theirs and the rest of us will be out in the cold in a road warrior scenario. Martin, you were getting into why they got upset with you as best you know. Finish up with that. And then where do you, I mean, I know we talked about this, but clearly they know where this is all going. And clearly they're trying to have a rear guard action of social engineering, divide and conquer, police state, but... I don't really see that working. No, I mean, I think that the, um, in, in my case, it was exactly like, like MF Global. They were, like I said, I was, we were buying Fannie Mae's rather than T-bills because Fannie Mae's you could not resell or for the night in repo in London. So they were just selling our Fannie Mae's and not putting entries in our accounts and then using the cash. And, um, they just get away with this stuff. It, it's it's just amazing. But um, what it is is that the bankers are the prime, the you know the major banks are the primary dealers. So they always get bailed out by threatening the government and saying, "Listen, if you take us down, then who's going to sell your debt?" So that's that's been the hook that that constantly goes back and forth and. But I believe this is really coming to a head. That's what our computer has been showing. This is just, it's getting to the point of a major, major crisis. We are at interest rates now, we're at 5,000 year lows. And it's just not sustainable. 
the, the quantitative easing has been really a mess in the sense that the banks uh, brought in, you know, the Fed brought in 30-year bonds and to try and help the mortgage market. Well, the problem is they're not going to be able to resell them now. So um, it's they're, the central banks are getting trapped. To be clear, the central ba and, banks are buying their own treasury bonds. Well, they bought the, it's not their bonds, it's the government's bonds. But uh, still, but, the central banks, even though they're quasi-private, it's one of the same is my point. Uh, yeah, well, on the balance sheet, they're, they're, you know, they are separate. But um, they're buying the feds, um, the federal government, the treasury. Um, sure, bonds. so how long can all of that crud sit in the fandom zone uh, before it bubbles up to the surface? Or could this new magical made-up economy go on forever? No, I honestly, I don't think it's going to last beyond probably March of next year. You're going to start seeing it going uh, a little bit nuts. Um, Europe is already, it, it's far you know worse there than here. Sure. Uh, mainly because of the design of the euro has is, is been a complete disaster. And, and, and people don't, in the States, they tend to look at the dollar and don't understand why it's so strong. But honestly, if you look around the world, there's no place to put money. The, the euro uh, could never compete with the dollar because they didn't have a single debt. You had, if you wanted to buy European bonds, you had to look at each individual country the same way you would have to buy state bonds here. And, and in theory, they thought all interest rates would be the same. And I told them when they, they came to us in 98, I told them this was going to fail. And you can't design a currency like this. And they, they, they said they understood that they just wanted to get the currency through first and then they would take care of the debt, but they never did. So each bank uh, in Europe is far worse than the United States because it, it, the bank's reserves are basically the government debt. Well, in I totally US, agree with you. So let me ask you this question. How do you see the dominoes falling? Because if the private big banks have got so much free money because they have the first use you know, of this interest-free money that they don't even want cash anymore. They don't even want deposits anymore. W effectively, with banking laws, as you know, they're getting rid of real banks that loan money to small businesses. Here's the Wall Street Journal, big banks to America's firms. We don't want your cash. I mean, there's got to be a method of this madness here. They've sure taken over. They've sure consolidated power. Well, you know, the Fed, it was very nice, it said, oh, okay, we're going to do quantitative easing. Um, it sounds like they're, you know, okay, you're going to expand the money supply. By bringing in the bonds, they, in theory, would be injecting the cash into the system. But then the banks said, well, we don't want to lend the money. So they created, at the same time, the excess reserve. And the Fed pays the banks a quarter of a percent interest. There's over two and a half trillion dollars sitting there. So it never went into the economy. And the rest of it, you know, China, et cetera, um, everybody's been selling the long term and said, thank you very much. So the money did not, you know, it, it, it under the old way of thinking, the Fed would, would buy bonds and in theory, it would be an American selling it to them. So you were ex increasing the domestic money supply. But today is everybody's using the dollar globally. Sure. So it's musical chairs. So, People are going to the dollar because it's the best, worst house on the block. How does it all end? When do you think it all starts to end? I, I honestly, it's going to start probably by March next year and go into 2017 and is going to get kind of really nuts. I, I know people look at U.S. debt and say, oh, it's 18 trillion. And then, you know, Take a look at the emerging markets. Since 2007, they issued $9 trillion of debt. They owe half as much as the United States, and they don't even have the economy sure. to support There's it. a bubble race. So no matter who loses the bubble race first, it affects everybody. So you think in the next two years, we'll see most of these bubbles starting to go down? Yeah, because um, this is why the Fed realizes it's in trouble. Um, you know, Janet Yellen and I, I mean, I, I'm glad I'm not her. She just really inherited a real nightmare. But what she keeps saying is that we have to normalize interest rates. 
The other side of the coin of this is that you have pension funds that are going bankrupt. Cowpers, you know, they needed to make seven and a half percent. They came in at 2.4. You know, you have pension funds going bust. And so if just the subprime crisis rate. triggered 2008, could it be Chicago going under, Puerto Rico going under? Uh, could it be uh, the California retirement fund going under? There are literally more than 50 of these time bombs. Uh, the big uh, union uh, pensions, as you know, are just getting cut in half, a bunch of them this week. Uh, this, uh, I, think, I think the timers are starting to ding. I think this cake is pretty much done. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, they lowered the interest rates to help the banks, but in doing so, they didn't realize they now created a pension crisis. And they can't get the rates up to help the pension funds. <laughs> And you have Europe, you know, trying to do negative rates, still trying to help the banks because it's an absolute disaster. So, I mean, it's, it's the, you know, from what we're seeing, the dominoes start to go overseas. All right. Europe will probably be first. Then you're looking at, um, you're, you're looking at Japan and, and emerging markets. Uh, you have Britain going to make a vote on exiting the EU. The polls right now are showing in favor of, of leaving. And I think once something like that begins, then the euro is going to absolutely tank. You're, we're looking at the euro probably going to new historic lows under 80 cents. This is going to drive the dollar up as capital concentrates here. Eventually, you know, we'll go into tangible assets, but at first, they're just buying dollars to park money. And is that going to cause inflation? It causes deflation first, which is what happened in the Great Depression. And going into 1932, the dollar went to all-time record highs. And um, that's what starts the protectionism because they say they can't sell anything. So it'll be inflation in Europe but not here in your view? It's... Europe is eventually just really just, it's in a complete meltdown mode. And once you see... And it's got the socialists committing suicide uh, with the giant immigrant floods. I mean, <laughs> I'll tell you, what a, I, I agree with you, disaster, I mean, Europe, disaster is not a strong enough word. It's, you have, uh, I was in Barcelona, they just voted to, to separate from Spain. I mean, I think Greece will end up breaking apart. Um, you have Scotland trying to get out of uh, the UK. You have UK basically going to probably vote to leave the, the euro. I mean, 40% of the youth in, in France don't want to be French anymore. I mean, it's, it's a total mess everywhere I go over there. I agree with you. We got callers all over the map. Our guest, Armstrong Economics, is Martin Armstrong, armstrongeconomics.com. Really interesting fellow. I suggest you see the film. It's excellent. Uh, let's talk to Sherry in Texas. Then we'll go to Eric. Then we'll go to Drake. Then we'll go to uh, another Eric. Got a bunch of Eric's and Pete and others. Sherry, thanks for holding her on the air with our guest. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, I, I see something happening that's going to really hurt the middle class. And I want his opinion on this. I see two things going on. First of all, because um, we need a less costly workforce, uh, this $15 an hour will work. If they, if they put in um, a low um, a, a workforce that is given welfare, uh, is funded by welfare, um, mostly, mostly um, people coming in from other countries, they'll be provided with low-cost housing, food stamps, Medicaid. It'll kind of be like a... A communist system, uh, unemployment. Sure, insurance. that's what we already have. Is where they bring in people who then have to have welfare as a supplement to their low wage. What's your specific question? Specific specific question is: This will be fifteen dollars an hour. They'll pay in. They'll be paying most of this fifteen dollars in for this low cost housing. They'll be taken care of. That leaves the middle class um, opting for small. Um, businesses and this is the big warning see what he thinks because like the um students before them and like the housing the homeowners before them and the farmers before them these the small these small businesses will be offered loans and and it's like don't take them you All know right, let me get his take on what you're uh, getting at there um yeah what will the u.s economy be like in your view and what would a 
increased uh, minimum wage due to the economy? Basically, the 